the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On this day, the Saturday before Pentecost, we celebrate the Saturday of Souls. And indeed, while the Saturday of Souls before Great Lent are well known to us, this is the true Saturday of Souls, the day set aside to remember all those who we know and do not know, who have passed on for blessedness into the kingdom of heaven. And so while we read the names of those that have been submitted, there is a general sense during the prayers that this service is for everyone. It is for this reason that we read the epistle that you heard Constantinos read, which is the epistle read at funeral services, in which we declare that, yes, we grieve. We grieve for those we have lost, but not like those who have no hope. Because we believe in the resurrection, we believe that the Lord will raise them up first before us when he comes again in glory. In today's gospel, we see once again the redemption of the leader of the disciples, Peter, who three times denied Jesus Christ before the cock crowed during the passion of our Lord and Savior. Here, Jesus Christ is redeeming Peter three times by asking him, do you love me? And we see St. Peter gently led from his simple love of Philo to the great love of Agape that Jesus Christ wants for him. He is told in order to acquire that selfless love, that agape, he must tend the Lord's sheep. He must feed the Lord's lambs. This is done by service. This is done by preaching the word of God. This is by being an example. And then Jesus Christ goes further and tells Peter how he is going to die. And it's not a good death. He is telling Peter that he will be raised up. And he will go where he does not wish to go. Therefore, we are to understand Jesus Christ is telling Peter, you will be crucified like me. Of course, we know that St. Peter not only would be crucified, but that he would request from his executioners to be crucified upside down because he did not feel worthy to be crucified in the same way as his Lord. But what is often neglected in this passage, perhaps more than the redemption of St. Peter and the revelation of his death, is what Peter says next. For he saw following them the disciple whom Jesus loved, that is, John the theologian, and he asks, well, what about him? What's going to happen to him? You just told me that I am going to die a brutal death for you. And then you close that with, follow me. What about this man? And the words of Jesus Christ should give us pause. He says, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. In other words, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus Christ is telling St. Peter, it doesn't matter what happens to John. His story is his story. Your story is your story. Do not concern yourself with his story. You have a singular mission. 
you are being called to follow me. If nothing happens to him, and he lives out his life in peace and dies in peace, or if he never dies, that has no bearing on your life. The reason why this is important, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, is because oftentimes when we look at our lives, we compare ourselves to other people. And we ask ourselves, well, why does this person seem to have everything? Or conversely, why is this person suffering so much? Why do I struggle to have a good job? Why do I struggle with my children? Why is my life so hard and this person's life is so easy? Seemingly. And conversely, why, why do they have to suffer like that? Why can't they have what they want? They're good people. They're faithful people. Why doesn't God give them a good job? Why doesn't God give them peace in their family? The reality is, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, there is no answer to that. Why some seem to have an easier time. The reality is, that's not for us to ask about. Jesus Christ is essentially telling St. Peter, yes, life is not fair. But what is that to you? Follow me. Because where it is fair, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, is in the judgment. Each and every one of us is called with singular missions. God is speaking to your heart singularly, you. And you are called to follow him, to take up your cross, whatever that cross may be, and not worry about who is on your left or who is on your right. What is their struggle? What is their joy? Focus on your path. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. If you focus on your path, which is to find agape, to find that selfless love in Christ, then it won't matter what you're dealing with because you'll be concerned about the other. You'll be loving your neighbor, helping your neighbor carry their cross, helping them get to Christ. And it won't matter to you what his or her struggle is. And it won't matter to you how your struggle differs from theirs. All that matters is that we are following Christ so that we can attain that perfect love, so that we too, like Peter, can be redeemed and full of that love, so that we can become like Christ. So my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, if it is his will that another remains until he comes, what is that to you? Follow him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That I regard it by your